Good evening, and welcome to Zoom Shakespeare's first screenplay reading. Tonight, we bring you the story of Edward Kiniston, the last man to play a woman on the Shakespearean stage, and the woman that took his place. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 2004's Stage Beauty by Jeffrey Atcher. Enjoy the show. The title card says, in his diary for 1660, Samuel Pepys wrote that the most beautiful woman on the London stage was named Kiniston. Like every actor licensed by law to portray women, Kiniston was a man. Thomas Betterton's Theatre in 1660 London. It is a performance of Othello. Stand by flies. Stand by flies, stand by flies, and Q. 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 It is the cause. It is the cause, my soul. Let me not name it to you, you chaste stars. It is the cause. Yet I'll not shed her blood, nor scar that whiter skin of hers than snow and smooth as monumental alabaster. Yet she must die, else she'll betray more men. Shh. Put out the light, and then put out the light. <laughs> if I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can gain thy former light restore. Should I repent me, but once put out thy light, Thou cunningest pattern of excelling nature, I know not where is that Promethean heat that can thy light relume. She wakes. I, who's there? Othello? I, Desdemona. Will you come to bed, my lord? Have you prayed tonight, Desdemona? Aye, my lord. If you bethink yourself of any crime unreconciled as, as yet to heaven and grace, solicit for it straight. Alas, my lord, what mean you by that? Well, do it and be brief. I will walk by. I would not kill thy unprepared spirit. No, heavens forfend, I will not kill thy soul. Talk you of killing. I, I do. What's the matter? That handkerchief that I so loved and gave thee, thou gavest to Cassio. No, no, by my life and soul, send for the man and ask him. Down, strumpet! Kill me tomorrow. Let me live tonight. Nay, if you strive. But half an hour. Being done, there is no pause. But while I say one prayer. It is too late. Oh, my good lord. Bravo! Bravo! Oh, my Bravo. good lord. Bravo! 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 It is the usual post-show hustle and bustle. It's the same every bloody show. It's not working. What do you mean? I'm trying to get to the end. They're shouting, Keniston. We haven't finished the show for three weeks. Fucking Ned Keniston. Not again, Dickie. It's my scene, his fans ruin. My entrance, my lines. Amelia dies too, you know. Dear boy, I had no idea. That does it. I serve my notice, Mr. Beddington. I quit. Mr. Kiniston? Mr. K, Mr. K, you were brilliant. Such eyes, such hair, such lips, and a voice to thrill. Surely you were the most beautiful woman in the house. See, Peeps likes it. I'm talking about my death scene. Something eludes me, a uh, gesture, a tone. You know what, Tommy? I'm dying too soon. Uh, as an actor for you, my death scene doesn't go on long enough. 
That's the fact, Mr. Kniston. The performance is a grand success. What I don't grasp is this. The king comes to the show last week. This is Othello. Oh, this is Othello. And he, and he says, the king says, bravo, Betterson. Wonderful show. Lots of thrills and chills. We're coming again Saturday next. One question, though. Could you make it cheerier? <laughs> cheerier, says I. Yes, he says. Just make it a little bit more jolly. So I say, your majesty. Shakespeare ends his play with Desdemona strangled, Emilia stabbed, and Othello disemboweling himself. Do you suggest we just do away with all that? Oh, no, he says. Kill them all. Just make it jollier. What none of you glean is that the king is expressing a particularly salient view of the stage. Ah, oh, your grace, what salient view of the stage would that be? He wants surprises. The king's been away. The theater's been closed for 18 years. Now he's back. The theaters are open. What does he find? The same old things. Poetry, he approves. Ideas, he approves. Two ladies to see Mr. Kiniston. Death, quality. tragedy, yes, but surprise him. Equality. What about sex? Is the, 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 the stage? The king approves of love, the idea. What about sex, the expression? Poetry can express sex. So can sex. Mr. Kiniston, if you insist on something more graphic, show it it. The king won't complain. How would you suggest I do that? Mm, surprise me. Excuse me, two gentle ladies want to come backstage. Two of them, excellent. They wish to be received by Mr. Kiniston. Five minutes, then bring them back. I five minutes. Got to put my visage back on. They want the illusion, not some green room hermaphrodite. This, Tommy, is why I deserve a share. Oh, no. What are you two talking about? Mr. Kinnison's contract is up. He's putting the screws on me. I want a share of the company. I'm as much of a draw as you are. More so. Prove it. Well... Where are your fans? Where are your ladies? Oh, all right. But a share of the company is out of the question. However, as a gesture of faith to prove that I'm trying to find a way in the interim, from this time forth, you can have approval of any actor who shares the stage with you. Gentlemen, you are my witnesses. No, And I'm off to another show. Oh, what show? Something new. Oh, I'll join you. Good show, Betterton. Lovely as always, Mr. K. Your grace, gentlemen. I wasn't good tonight. You were splendid. Yes, but I wasn't good. Same old things. Fortunately, they keep giving me new audiences. <laughs> Why does one act? When you act, you can be seen. Hmm? Yeah. Greet your public, it always cheers you up. <laughs> oh, oh, you start, you do it. No, you do it, I'll die. Mr. Kiniston, we saw the performance this evening. We're such fans, I can't tell you. She's seen you six times. She has, <laughs> Juliet and Ophelia. Oh, and the one with no hem. Oh, Mr. Kiniston, I am a great fan. I was wondering. Well, would you be willing to ride with us through St. James tonight? It would be such an honour to have you. Please, 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 please. Please, please. Could you give me half an hour to remove my face and clothes? Oh, no. <clears throat> Don't. Please. Mr. Kiniston, we'd like you to leave your appearance as is. Oh, is it? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Kiniston, if I may, would you be able to make me an advance on salary? Advance? That's unlike you. Uh, till the end of the week. How much? Six. Thank you. Uh, will you be needing me later? Uh, yes, hopeless without. <laughs> How long do you think you'll be with them? Three hours, say? Uh, yes, I'll be here. All right. <clears throat> Mr. Kiniston! Mr. Kiniston! Oh, is he coming? You hurry up, Mr. Keniston, please. 
Cockrell's Tavern later that night. Where were you? We thought you'd abandoned us. I couldn't get away. Did you bring it? Mr. Cockrell. <clears throat> you expect to perform, I expect my guarantee. It's my risk, you know. It's illegal to have these on stage. A carriage in St. James's Park. Both of us were rather wondering if you were really well, a gentleman. For you see, my father's a wig maker. He says you're much too beautiful to be a gentleman. He says you must be a woman. My mother's friend, the Earl of Lauderdale, says if you were a man, you don't have a gentleman's thingy. <laughs> he says you're like those Italian singers, the, um, the what's it? Castrati. Yes, the Earl says they cut your, off your castrati at birth. And then you become a woman. So the Earl of Lauderdale is not a surgeon? No, he's an Earl. Well, then, how may we prove to both your father and your mother's special friend that I indeed do have a thingy, a big, bulging orb and scepter of a thingy? Well, I... I, I think we'd... We'd have to. Oh, we'd have to. We'd have to touch it. Touch what? What, whatever it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Cockerel's Tavern. If I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can again thy former light restore, should I repent me. For once put out thy light, thou cunningst pattern of excelling nature, I know not where is that Promethean heat that can thy light relume. She wakes. Who's there, Othello? St. James's Park. Oh my. <laughs> this is broken. <laughs> oh, um, here. What's this? A shilling. The service is rendered. Women, beware. I see three fish eager and awaiting. Come, skewer on my pole. I know a playful bunch when I see them. Oh, painted ladies in the night, universal sign for whores to let. How much for the each of you? On a sake, sir, assert yourself. Well, dear, how can I? I'm but a wilting girl. Oh, come on. How much for the fuck? Oh, do something. Very well. Uh, this one's a shilling. That one's a penny. I'm <laughs> five pounds a week. Sir, do you know who I am? I am Lady Aurelia Marisvale. She's the shilling. Oh! You! Driver! Get us out of here. Wait a minute. I I've got a shilling. I'm not done haggling yet. <laughs> I warn you, sir, I doubt you'll find in me what you're looking for. Oh, ho, ho, I'll be the judge of that now. Come on, open up. Oh, found a guardian at the gate, did you? Five pounds, indeed. It was the weight, not the price. Wait a minute, I didn't say no, did I? I'm in the market for a mistress. A male one might be just the thing. Sir, I am spoken for. I shall never wear this glove again. Mark me, bum boy. I shall see to you and we shall settle this account. Back at Cockrell's Tavern, after the other production of Othello. <laughs> Cheers. Even if it was only a one-off, at least we did it once, eh? And another three hours. Oh, no, I have to go. Mariah! Mariah, where are you going, my dear? Mr. Peeps! Mariah, that was quite a performance. Thank you, sir. Ooh, hidden talents. Who'd have thought it? Our secret, eh? I say... You know, I was wondering. Mariah, I know it is rather last minute, 
but still, if I may, tomorrow evening. Uh, really? If you're free, that is. Later that night, Kiniston and Mariah have both returned to Betterton's theatre after their adventures. What happened to my pillow? Oh, God, a, a tear. Did I do that? Oh, must have. <laughs> oh, we do not know our passions. Oh, Mariah, I am exhausted. Why? Those two gentle ladies wanted to feel my cock for the sake of a wager. <sighs> Are you in a hurry to get home? No. Mm, help me. I want to do the death scene again. <laughs> now? Mm. All the elements are there. It just feels off. Well, the audience doesn't notice. I'm not satisfied. Uh, you be Othello. I'll be me. Okay. Where do I start? I'll start. Um, alas, alas, he's betrayed, and I undone. Grab the pillow. Oh, out, strumpet! Weeps thou for him to my face? Oh, banish me, my lord, but kill me not! Down, strumpet! Kill me tomorrow, let me live tonight. Now come at me. Uh, uh, nay, if you strive. But half an hour. Being done, there is no pause. But while I say one prayer, it is too late, uh, smother, smother, smother. She doesn't kiss him. What is it? Did they succeed? Did who succeed? The ladies, in feeling you. <laughs> What kind of girl do you take me for? Help me with this. Do you want me to mend your pillow? Mm. Uh, do it tomorrow. Day off. Plenty of time. Well, you could use a new one. Mariah, this pillow was given to me by my old tutor who found me in the gutter. He gave me a home. He gave us all a home, pretty boys like me. He taught us to read. He taught us Shakespeare, all the tricks and turns and... He gave this to me the first time I played Desdemona. And remember, he'd say, the part doesn't belong to an actor. An actor belongs to a part. Never forget, you're a man in a woman's form. Or was it the other way around? Yeah, if he's dead now, hard to prove either way. I think you'd be as fine a man as any woman. <laughs> Mariah, we are souls entwined. Off you go. I can shed my skin without you. <laughs> Ed. Oh, damn. <laughs> Milady. Don't ever do that again. Oh, my God, what are you doing here? Thought I'd surprise you. Oh. Where have you been? I was stranded in St. James Park. A frilly fop with a hard on thought I was a whore on the make. <laughs> this is why I prefer Hyde Park. There's so much less of that sort of thing. So, what happened? Once he found my cock, off he went. <laughs> Wasn't the case with me. Let me show you something. Uh, here, read. Hmm. I come unknown to any of the rest to tell you news. I saw the lady dressed. The woman plays to... The woman plays... Mm -hmm. The woman? An actress. A what? An actress at Cockrell's Tavern. The cockpit put up a little stage, very tatty, but still... Uh, my, my, it's a joke. It's a fake. Jimmy Noakes. I know Jimmy Noakes. It, it was not Jimmy Noakes. With that, it was not any man. It was a girl. But it's illegal. One did think as much. Well, a, a woman playing a woman? Where, what's the trick in that? What was the play? No! If you're wondering, she did not play the moor. How was she? What? Oh, How was she? You mean the acting. <laughs> I never noticed the acting. Did you go round after? Ugh, too crowded. Pepys went. Two mice were fucking in a nutshell. He'd find room to squeeze in and write it down. What was her name? The actress. 
Evans. Uh, Mrs. Margaret Hughes. Yes, Miss Margaret Hughes. The word is she's going to be at the palace tomorrow night. Palace? Are you invited? I'm the Duke of Buckingham. I always ask. Are you going? I might drop by. Take me there. You want to go to the palace? Yes. With me? Yes. You grow as an acquaintance who behaves himself. If you try to grow your part, you'll find your roles been cut. Yeah. Right. Oh, man. Mm. Put this on, will you? I'd like to see a golden flow as I die in you. Would you ask your lady horse to wear a wig to bed? If it made them more a woman. <laughs> the two kiss and proceed to have sex. It is obvious that this is not the first time. Mariah appears. She watches unbeknownst to them. Cut to the palace of King Charles II. Who can resist such mighty, mighty charms? Who can resist such mighty, mighty charms? Who can resist? Who can resist? Victorious, victorious, victorious love. Who can resist such mighty, mighty charms? Who can resist such mighty charms? Bravo! Bravo! Well done! His <laughs> Grace, the Duke of Buckingham, and Mr. Edward Keniston. George, you're late. Ah, uh, Your Majesty. I thought you'd skipped us. And Kiniston, I know you, you're... The actor. Oh, yes, 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 you, you were in... Um... Uh, Othello, sir. This Thursday last at Mr. Betterton's. Who are you? Not Iago, I hope. I didn't like him. I played Desdemona. Ah, that Kiniston. <laughs> late wife of the murderous Moor. <laughs> Went to see the show last week. Curtain was late. <laughs> I said, what's the matter? They said, your majesty Desdemona is still shaving. <laughs> <laughs> you paint a blush upon me, sir. Oh, do you know Miss Gwynne, my pretty witty Nell? Mr. Kiniston, I'm a great admirer. Oh. Nell is the most ardent theatre girl in London. I used to be an orange girl. I worked the stalls before, during and after every performance. Oranges, oranges, two pence a pair. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Kinderson, about the Othello. Saw it last week. Good show. But uh, it needed changes. You see, it could be a bit... Jollier? That's what I said. Yes, yes, yes. What we want are... Surprises. Exactly. But we don't want to know they're coming. Mr. Samuel Pepys and Mrs. Margaret Hughes. Your Majesty. Pepys, you brought a guest. Mrs. Hughes, Miss Gwynn. I take your hand, but my tear fall out. <laughs> and Mr. Kiniston. Oh dear. Oh, you're all right, Mrs. Hughes. <clears throat> yes, yes. Sir Charles Sedley. Sedley, I think you know everyone here, except for Mrs. Hughes and Mr. Kiniston. Oh, Kiniston? It feels as if I've had the honour already. Or you've already had the honour of feeling it. Obviously, I'm behind in my drinking. Hmm. Well, shall we in for dinner? Lady Jane Bellamy, follow me. <laughs> Allow me, Mrs Hughes. I can explain everything. I... Are you a philosopher? You, Peeps the Duke, this is all some great joke the three of you are playing? Mr. Kiniston, I had no idea that you would be here, or that I would be there, or that we would be near one another. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> Mrs. Hughes, Hughes, would you sit next to Mr. Sedley? Yes. Don't make a scene. Uh, George, do you know... Lady Jane Bellamy. 
No, but I certainly hope to. Tell me about your parentage, Miss Quinn. Well, my mom was all, my father the Navy. That's why I don't never I, do sailors. I see. I'm sorry I missed your performance tonight, Miss Quinn. Will you do it again? No, all that for a one-off. You know, work, 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 and it's over in a pop. Like Charlie. <laughs> What's that, my dear? Miss Quinn, I remind you, you are speaking to the father of his people. Well, uh, a lot of them. Uh, Mrs. Hughes, have you seen Mr. Kiniston perform? He's doing Desdemona in Othello now. You've seen it, George? Yes, I never tire of Othello. Truth be told, sir, he never tires of Desdemona. Uh, Kiniston, isn't there someone else who does Desdemona? Can't think of his name now. Uh, James Noakes. Yes, yes, yes. Good actor, Noakes. But not quite his part, though. Doesn't have your beauty. <laughs> no, Kiniston, Desdemona is yours alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, but if I may, sir, a, a part doesn't belong to an actor. An actor belongs to a part. Don't you agree, sir? Um, don't, don't know. Um, do you agree, Mr. Kinnison? Ah, well, there uh, have been other Desdemonas before me, sir. There will be more after. In fact, ah. the Duke of Buckingham just saw another one just last night. Did you, Your Grace? George? What performance does Mr. Kiniston refer to? Uh, uh, um. Well, it wasn't strictly a theatre. <clears throat> the women plays today Mrs. Margaret Mrs. Hughes, is this you? Yes. You, a woman, performed in a play in a public theatre against the order of the crown? As his grace said, it, it's not a real theatre. It, it's more of a sort of a tavern, and hence outside of the... I uh... am the first minister, Mrs. Hughes. I know what the law is. Mrs. Hughes... This performance of yours, was it to a one-off? Oh, well, sir, it, it certainly was novel, but uh, we had hoped to have more chances. That's the tricky thing about novelty. Do it more than once, it's not novel anymore. <laughs> that may be true, Mr. Kinnison, but in the theatre I am told there are no old shows, just new audiences. <laughs> You're going to do it again? Uh, she most certainly is not. Sir, I insist you issue a proclamation closing this cockpit. Sir Charlie! Sir! Charlie! Quiet! Please. When my father was alive, it had long been illegal for a woman to perform in public. In the palace, of course, it was women galore. Private musicals, masks. No one gave a damn except the clerics. One minister, a Mr. Prynne, wrote a pamphlet against all actresses as lewd women and whores. And now my mother had acted in some of those court masks, and she felt Mr. Prynne's diatribe was directed at her. So Mr. Prynne was tried, convicted, and sentenced to the stocks, where his feet were burned, his ears lopped off, and his tongue cut out. Yet, in spite of all this, Mr. Prynne never recanted. Some say his stoicism in the face of such excess is what fanned the flames of the Puritan revolt. Mm. And so off with my father's head, and I to Holland for 20 years. I think it might be fun to see women on the stage. They've had them in France for a long time now. Yes. Whenever we're about to do something truly horrible, we always say the French have been doing it for years. <laughs> I'd issue a proclamation 
Permission to perform is hereby granted. <laughs> to Mrs. Hughes? To all women. And we wish to see this new Othello at the earliest possible convenience. Today's Saturday. Make no hide. Saturday. Othello. The other one. So, Kinister, will you see Mrs. Hughes perform? I I'd love to know what you think of the death scene. Oh, I'm always interested in how my rivals die. Your Grace? Uh, well, no, I I've had my fill of death <laughs> Shall I escort you home, Mrs. Hughes? Yes. I suddenly find myself a devotee of the stage. Not in an artistic sense, of course, but as a sort of patron. <laughs> I'm off as well. Uh, Kiniston, shall I drop you? Uh, yes, I need my sleep. We're auditioning new Amelia's tomorrow, then two shows of you-know-what. Um, so, Charles, I shall never wear this glove again. <laughs> Mrs. Hughes, the cockpit tavern is no place for someone of your particular attractions. <laughs> I think you should audition for Mr. Betterton's theatre tomorrow. Oh, I couldn't. What about Mr. Kinston? Surprise him. Backstage at the theatre the next morning. Morning, Mr. Kinston. Your picture's selling well. Mr. Kiniston, Mr. Betterton, I wish to discuss with you the role of Amelia. It's over the top for that, aren't we, Sunshine? Oh, not me, sir, not me. I come to speak on behalf of Mrs. Margaret Hughes. Mr. Kiniston. Aha, Mrs. Hughes. Settling in, I see. <laughs> A dress, one of mine. I made it for myself. Oh, of course you did. You're so good at the needle and the pin. Mr. Kiniston, I must apologise. Oh, I'm... no, please. Just a question, as you are quite obviously going to audition today. Do you know the five positions of feminine subjugation? What? The five positions of feminine subjugation? No? Or perhaps you're more acquainted with the pose of tragic acceptance or the... Demeanor of awe and terror. Mr. Kiniston, I really the must... clasp, or the attitude of a prostate. Funny, you've seen me perform them a thousand times. Mr. Kiniston, I... Now there's a feminine gesture. You seem to have managed the stamp of girlish petulance. I just wanted to act. I just wanted to do what you do. But, madam, I have worked half my life to do what I do. Fourteen boys crammed in a cellar. When I trained, I was not permitted to wear a woman's dress for three years. I was not permitted to wear a wig for four, not until I had proved that I had eliminated every masculine gesture, every masculine intonation from my very being. What teacher did you have? What cellar was your home? I had no teacher, nor such a classroom, but then I had less need of training. At any rate, Mr. Kinnison, I thank you for the professional advice, but I did not come here today to audition. Oh, come. I saw Sedley downstairs singing your praises. What he does is his business. Sir Charles has taken an interest in me. Oh, Sir Charles. Sir Charles! Other actors have aristocratic patrons. Whom would you rather take me in hand? I did not come here to audition. I only came to the theatre today to collect my belongings. Oh, lest I forget. <clears throat> your advance, sir. You'll be pleased to know it was your generosity that bought last night's performance. Oh. Paid with interest. You want me to pay... You want to pay me to watch an audition? This could start a trend. Who's your protege? Mr. Betterton, this is Mrs. Margaret Hughes. Mm. Mariah? <laughs> Mariah, that is, it's not a stage name. Oh, wait a minute. So the, the Hughes that played at Cockerell's place last night was, was our Mariah. All of London is talking about Mrs. Hughes' performance. And as you know, the King has just this past evening relaxed the laws against women playing women. Yes, I heard. And as this is your day, Mr. Betterton, to seek out new Amelia's... Yes, yes, I, I, I see, I see. And Ned, just in time. Such drama. <laughs> our own very Mariah is going to take the stage. Do you have a scene for us, M Mariah, Mrs... I, uh, I do. 
actually. Yeah, well, um, uh, what will you be doing for us today? Uh, a soliloquy. From? A fellow. <clears throat> and the role? Desdemona. Well, this should be fun. Sir Charles. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Hughes. <clears throat> What shall I do to win my lord again? Good friends, go to him, for by this light of heaven I know not how. May I start again? Oh, please. Thank you. <clears throat> what shall I do to win my lord again? Good friends, go to him, for by this light of heaven I know not how. I know not how. I know not how. I know not how I lost him. Yes, of course. Thank you. Not at all. I say it every night. May I begin again? Oh, heavens, I was going to suggest it myself. <clears throat> I know not how. I know not how I lost him. <clears throat> what shall I do to win my lord again? Good friends, go to him. For by this light of heaven, I know not how I lost him. If e'er my will did trespass against his love, either in course of thought or in actual deed, or that mine eyes, mine ears, or any other sense, delighted him in any other form, or that I do not yet, and ever did, and ever will, though he do shake me off to beggarly divorcement, love him dearly, comfort forswear me, unkindness may do much, and his unkindness defeat my life, but never taint my love. That was it. But was it? Oh, yes. Yes, of course, of course it was. <laughs> I was caught up with the, um, by the, uh, the gestures and such. Oh. Well, well, I have, um, I've, I've, I've never seen the role performed quite like that before. Do you think there might be something for me? I don't know. It depends. Uh, on? <laughs> on thousands of actors ahead of you dying of the plague. That's being funny. It depends on the audiences of London losing their eyes, their ears, and, truth be told, their sense of smell. I, I confess, Miss Hughes, when I heard about your performance, I was worried, women on stage, what would become of me? And then you auditioned for us. You have taken a great load off my mind. Mr. Betterton, thank you for your time. Mariah, my dear. No, sir, I'm late for Mr. Cockrell's. Dear, dear, um, well, good luck with the show. I I I'd love to pop in to see it. Yes, I'd arranged tickets, but were sold out. Sold out? Mm. Mariah, Mariah, uh, Mrs. Mm. Hughes. Come, 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 Ned. Ned, what, what say we give Mrs. Hughes one of the roles to play? Oh, no, 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 not, not you know who. That's you, of course, but uh, we are looking for an uh, Amelia. Uh, she might just splash things up a bit. Uh, what do you say? I, I refuse. What do you mean you refuse? I shall not act with her. On what right? My right, Mr. Betterton. You gave me approval of a casting and I hereby exercise said right. But she sold out cockerels. Indeed, the place was packed and the crowd clapped and clapped. I recall a puppet show once where a recently departed dog was stuffed and danced <laughs> with Punch and Judy and that, that crowd clapped too. Oh, Ned. If you attempt to argue the case for Mrs. Hughes further, indeed, if you attempt to audition her or any other women ever again, I will consider it a breach of contract and leave the stage forthwith. Edge! I had myself intended to audition today, but if this is how you treat women, well, mark me, sir. Women will lay blame. Come on. Hell was that? That is the king's mistress. This shall be remembered, Betterton. Oh my God, uh, Sir Charles. Oh, sorry. Mr. Keniston, I am a man of my contract and my word. You exercise your right today. I mine tomorrow. Oh, this vile thespian is in need of a come down and on his own turf. The bedroom of King Charles the Second later that morning.
Honey. Is that you? Yes. What is it, sweet? Charlie. <clears throat> you love me, don't you? Well, I've always said. And you never deny me. Now what do you want? Hmm? No, 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 can't. Please? Oh, it's out of the question. I'll never ask another favour. No. Charlie. Uh, no, I work to do. Please. Charlie boy. Where's this toy? No, 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 no. no. This is a very important business. We are at war. We are at war with the um, Dutch. Oh, your majesty. Let me see the crown. <sighs> After they have finished, Charles exits the bedroom and goes into the hall. <clears throat> I'd, I'd, uh, I want to dictate something. Are you all right, sir? Backstage, that night, after another performance of Betterton's Othello. Bravo, Mr. Kiniston, bravo! <laughs> Mr. Ned, sir, we need to see you, Mr. Kiniston. Mr. Kiniston, we wish to apologise for our rudeness the other day. Uh, we wish to make things up with you. May we take you for a drive? May we? A carriage in St. James's Park. Why have we stopped? Oh, come with us, Mr. Keniston. What are you up to? It's more of a question of what you're up to. Have you ever had an occasion to perform out of doors? Uh, not that I can recall. Then I beg of you, sir, flatter us who do not deserve your good graces. Oh. Oh. <laughs> You mocked us, sir. You, an actor, mocked your betters. You shall know the other end of it now, bum boy. Where is the whore of the Moor of Venice? Where's your frog, my dear? Uh, you mistake me, gentlemen. No mistake. Tis he, the slow himself, oh. just as we've been oh. foretold. <laughs> Hit him again. <clears throat> I have in hand an edict. I wish it passed, put down in law, and circulated throughout the affected areas post haste. A royal licensing law which states in binding language as does follow. Whereas the woman's parts in plays have hitherto been acted by men in the habits of women, at which some have taken offence, we do permit and give leave for the time to come that all women's parts be acted by women. No he shall air again on an English stage. Play she. Six weeks later. Mariah, a.k.a. Margaret Hughes, is having her portrait painted by Sir Peter Lely. Though it be true that talent is as talent does, whilst beauty fades like starlight at the break of day, surely you recognize the fact that you are without a doubt the most beautiful woman on the English stage. I am an actress, not a beauty. <laughs> be that as it may. If I am to paint your beauty, Miss Hughes, I must paint it with a tit exposed. How else prove to the theatre goers of London that you are a real woman? Before you can be taken seriously as an actress, you must put bums on seats. <clears throat> All right, paint. And thus is flesh made art. Uh, Kinnison, I see your wounds are on the men. Yes, I was fallen upon by a gang of critics. Oh. Then will you be back on stage, Mr. K? As soon, soon as I they hope. As soon as they let me. Positions, eh? 
What role will mark your return? <laughs> what else but Desdemona? What do you want here, Kinnison? I want my pillow. It seems to be lost. I was wondering if Miss Hughes might know where it is. This is intolerable. Sir Charles, gentlemen, could you leave Mr. Kinniston and me for a moment? You know, Mr. K, the performance of yours I always liked best. As much as I adored your Desdemona and your Juliet, I always loved best the Britches parts. Rosalind, for instance. And not just because of the woman stuff, but also because of the man sections. Your performance of the man stuff seems so right, so true. I suppose I felt it was the most real in the play. You know why the man stuff seems so real? Because I'm pretending. You see a man through the mirror of a woman through the mirror of a man. You take one reflecting glass away, it doesn't work. The man only works because you saw him in contrast to the woman he is. If you saw him without the her, he lives inside. He, he wouldn't see a man at all. Yes. You've obviously thought longer on this question than I. I, I heard about your... Uh... Yes, yes, I'd imagine you'd heard. Imagine you might have more than heard. Perhaps you even heard before it happened. I do not have your pillow. Well, you could have said that in front of them. I have taken nothing that belonged to you. You wear my clothes, play my parts, live my lives, and you've <sighs> taken nothing. A woman's perspective, or at least a recognizable one. That pillow was my own. It was given to me some time back, as you know. Yes, a dresser always knows a gentleman's secrets. Of course, I have my own dresser now. He's a man. He used to be an actor. I don't suppose you'd guess what type. No, madam. I'm amazed you have need of an audience. With such self-regard as you display, what room is there left for the public's love? What do you know of love, sir? Or loyalty? Or adoration suffered in deepest silence? The only love you know, sir, is what you act on stage. Back at the theatre, Kiniston finds Betterton carrying a large dummy. Oh, you are men of stone. Oh, you are men of stone. Leah. How'd you guess? Cordelia, you're practicing the carry. Light. Lighter than you. <laughs> At work in performance. In performance, I carry a real woman. I form a seamstress from Sheffield twice my size. So what do you want? Um, I want another go at the death scene. Can't. Crown would close me down if I did. <sighs> Tommy. You cost me the palace's support. You refuse to act with women on the day that the king's mistress, a mistress desirous of a career on the stage, was watching. Besides, the company's full up. You weren't the only actor cut loose by the law. The town's full of your sort now. Mr. Betterton. Time to see the gonorrheals. Happy days, Tommy. Is she good? The Hughes. As an actress, she's a star. She did what she did first. You did what you did last. Kiniston, fully dressed, finds Villiers, the Duke of Buckingham, in the Turkish baths and approaches him. Good God, you're approaching that. <laughs> Would your grace like me to disrobe? Quiet. This isn't the place. I thought you hated heat and steam. I'm purifying myself. Why didn't you come to my rooms when you'd heard I'd been attacked? I knew you wouldn't want me to see you after what they'd done to you. Why didn't you write? Ned, I've never been a word type. That is a dangerous live on long after their passions have died. They're, they're dangerous only if they're secret. I'd call us a secret, wouldn't you? <sighs> Beginning to be whispers. Those things you said at the palace. I warned you, Ned. 
shall I do to win my lord again? Don't. <sighs> Getting married. Jane Bellamy. You met her, I believe. <sighs> it's this Saturday. The king's coming. Dryden's composed a sonnet. Jane's quite a charming thing, really. Pretty, rich, surprisingly literate. And a woman. What's she like in bed? What's she like to kiss? Does she wear a golden flow as you die in her, or don't you know? I don't want you! What does you want now? I... When I did spend time with you, I just thought of you as a woman. When we were in bed, it was always in a bed on stage. I think here I am in a play inside Desdemona, Cleopatra, or poor Ophelia. Oh, none of them now. I, I don't know who you are. And I doubt you do. The palace. Kind sir, would point this dagger at this comely thicket, my lady. <laughs> my li Ma madam. Kind uh, sir, but beg your pardon. I'm uh, looking for Miss Nell Gwyn. You won't find her here. She's in the wings, about to make her entrance. Kind, kind, kind sir, would point thy dagger at this uh, sir. Com uh, uh, do you forgive? We're about to perform one of our palace musicales. Sir, the guest. You look familiar. Sir, I am Edward Kiniston. Kiniston? How the hell did you get in here? A former fellow actor is your undercook, and he has long been a dear friend of mine. And... You would have to execute him. A joke, a joke. Calm yourself, Kiniston. What do you want with Nell, anyway? He doesn't like you very much. When she came to Mr. Betterton's theatre, my bile was aimed at another. I did not even see Mrs. Gwynne. I I'm sure you can straighten it out. But it's just not important to me. It is to me! Charlie, what's holding things up? up. Oh. Say what you want. I want to act. Then act. I want to act as I did before. The girls' parts. If you will. I won't. Oh, balance the scales, Kiniston. Give the girls a chance. Besides, it's a sop to the church. Priests always preach about boys playing women. They say it leads to effeminacy and sodomy. Well, they'd know they're priests. Act a man, Kiniston. How hard could that be? It's not a question of acting a man. I can act a man. There's no artistry in that. <laughs> there are things I can be as a woman that I cannot be as a man. Such as? A star. No, <laughs> I think Mr. Kiniston could be a star in any guise. If indeed there is no artistry in acting a man, then show us. Be a man for us, and perhaps his majesty will change his mind as to whether you can play a woman. Yes, uh, perform a soliloquy that uh, displays all that is bold and masculine and strong in a man. Let's see you. Let's see you as Othello. <clears throat> it is the cause. It is the cause, my soul. Let me not name it to you, you chaste step. May I start again? Please, yes, yes, yes but by all means. Thank you. It is the cause. It is the cause, my soul. Let me not name it to you, you chaste stars. It is the cause. It all not shed her blood nor scar that whiter skin of hers than snow. Sorry. May I, I once more? 
please. <laughs> Yet she must die, else she'll betray more men. Put out the light, then put out the light. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, if, if, if I could give it one more go, uh, one more go, I, I feel that I can... Well, well, well. Show to do. Come on. <clears throat> Kiniston, my astronomers tell me that a star's light shines on long after it has died, even though it doesn't know it. Hmm. Exile is a dreadful thing for one who knows his rightful place. Shall we, sir? We shall, madam. <laughs> I'm not staying. It's by royal command. Stay without me. Mr. Kiniston! Mr. Kiniston! A month later, Samuel Pepys is visiting Mariah backstage <laughs> at Cockrell's Tavern after a performance of King Lear. Difficulty as I see it is that, well, a fear ago of these days has so many choices. There's Mrs. Corbett doing Romeo and Juliet, Mrs. Brace Girl in Twelfth Night, Mrs. Barry in Hamlet, and you, you of course, in Lear. The house was half full today at best. Well, summer, you know. Will you be here for the second performance? I fear not, Mrs. Hughes. Going off to see one of my rivals. <laughs> you have no rivals, Mrs. Hughes. Mr. Pepys, who do you write all those little notes for? For myself alone. Do you enjoy it? I love it. Don't you love acting? Yes. But unfortunately, I cannot do it for myself alone. For I fear... In truth, I am terrible at it. <laughs> oh, now. Now, my dear Mrs. Hughes. You are too harsh on yourself. <laughs> You made your debut as the first actress on the English stage. Mr. Pepys, when I made my debut, was I a good actress? Mrs. Hughes, there was no comparison. Mr. Cockrell. Mrs. Hughes. Thought I'd pop in and see the show. Lighthouse today. Oh, Mrs. Hughes, do, do you know Mrs. Barry? I hear so much about you, Mrs. Hughes. I would so like to someday see your Avila. Well, let's have a cordial after the show. Eh? I want to talk about some, some changes. M Mr. Pepys. Yes? Do you know the whereabouts of Mr. Kiniston? Tavern of Mistress Revels. Kiniston has been reduced to performing in this seedy dive. Oh, mother, oh, mother, oh, what shall I do? Oh, I've married a man who's unable to screw. My troubles are many, my pleasures are small, for I've married a man who has no balls at all. No <laughs> balls, no balls at all. Married a man who has no balls at all, no balls at, no balls at all. Hey. That was hey. oh. okay. And speaking of how, it is my understanding, having circled the room as it were, that there are some of you chits. <laughs> And some ladies out there. Hey, yeah, you can <laughs> rub my bowl anytime. Oh. What think our little pretty one here is not actually what we call a complete female stage beauty. Oh, oh he is like a real fish. <laughs> Where? We got proof. 
Where is it? Oh. Right here. <laughs> Come on. Up further, Missy dear. Raise the curtain, <laughs> please. <laughs> okay. Up, up higher. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. What do you want, Trout? I want the lady. After we've finished. I'll give you five pounds. Take the money. Now get off my stage and give me back my merkin. Cut to the next morning. Kiniston awakes in a room at an inn. Mariah is by his side. You've slept. You can stay here the week I paid the innkeeper that far. Have you eaten? We'll get food and drink in you. And no spirits. <laughs> Why are you doing this? Why won't you play men? Men aren't beautiful. What they do isn't beautiful, either. Women do everything beautifully, especially when they die. Men feel far too much. Feeling ruins the effect. Feeling makes it ugly. Perhaps that's why I could never pull off that death scene. I could never feel it in a way that wouldn't mar them. I couldn't let beauty die. Without beauty, there's nothing. Who could love that? Be with you while you sleep. I want to make sure I don't run off. <laughs> <laughs> I've never slept with a man before. I've never slept with a woman. Except myself. <laughs> never. <laughs> never slept. <laughs> what? What do men do? <laughs> with women? With men? They... <laughs> <laughs> they, well... <laughs> we have... Uh, it depends. On? On who's the man and who's the woman. <laughs> but but I said men with men. Yes, yes, I, I know. But um, with men and women, there's a man and there's a woman. And my experience has been that it's the same with men and men. <laughs> oh, you're the man or the woman? I was the woman. <laughs> <laughs> that means... Um, it, it, um, yeah, uh, in the saddle. <laughs> she tops him from behind as he has instructed her to do. So, <clears throat> am I the man now, or the woman? You're the man. And you're the woman? Yes. <laughs> there isn't much to do. <laughs> Not with what we're given. <laughs> tops her from behind. So who am I now? Um, you're the man, uh, you're the woman. <laughs> and you're... I'm the man. Or, so I assume, seldom get up here. Quite a view. But but I'm... I'm the man-woman. Yes, you're the man-woman. <laughs> They're face to face now, and things have changed. The tension is real between them now, and it's foreplay. And what am I now? You're the woman. Still? Yes. And now what am I? The woman. And now? The woman. And you are? The man. <sighs> Tell me something. Anything. How do you die? What? As Desdemona, how do you die? Oh, no, no, I, I'm sorry, I, I wanted to... Your old tutor did you a great disservice, Mr. Kiniston. He taught you how to speak and swoon and toss your head, but he never taught you how to suffer like a woman or love like a woman. He trapped a man in a woman's form and left you there to die. <laughs> I always hated your Desdemona. You never fought. You just died beautifully. No woman would ever die like that, no matter how much she loved him. A woman would fight. The next morning, back at Betterton's theatre. 
I need a Desdemona. What? Sheffield's gift to the theater has returned to her mother's to have a baby. A baby? Well, that didn't happen in the old days. It's a catastrophe. It? The palace is reconsidering its patronage. The king is coming to see the show tonight, and I need a Desdemona by eight o'clock. Right. Uh, Who's available? Uh, th there is uh, only one actress in London I'm aware of that uh, knows the part and is currently between bookings. Mariah's place of lodging. I won't do it. But didn't you hear him? It's for the king. But I'm no good. Well, that never stopped you before. My dear, uh, the king comes tonight to decide whether to patronize my theater again. If we put him off, he'll know something's up. You must play, Mrs. Hughes. What do you intend to do about this? I can't play Desdemona. I never could. I don't know how to act. Where is he? But you get the in. You could just take her in hand. He did some tricks and turns. Most of the play she'll get by. It's the end that's bad, when she dies. She, she's no good. I say this as a friend. Mr. Keniston, have you, have you ever seen Mrs. Hughes on the stage? I saw her audition. That was enough. Why? What's she like? You. She does you. Every inflection, every bat of the eye, bits of business, vocal tricks. Then she shouldn't be half bad. But it doesn't work. Forgive me, I have spoken loudly. Did she send you here? No one knows we've come. What do you offer me, pretty witty Nell? A friend. Friends I've had, give me an audience. If that's what you want, you must take it with your own hands. A man isn't how he talks or walks. It's what he does. Well, what's your answer? At Betterton's Theatre. Gentlemen. We have procured a tutor. Oh. Ned. Tommy. Kinnison, some rules of engagement. Uh, first rule, you're out. Betterton. No, 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 no. Uh, best work in private, Sir Charles. We shall excellent Kiniston, but mark our history and my property. You are assisting my Desdemona. Don't try anything funny. If you give her a funny voice or a funny walk, a squint, I'll notice. And I won't like it. Critic is born. And all because I thought you were a whore and grabbed your cock. <sighs> And now, is there anything else you want? Some, some wine, some cheese? A share. <laughs> I would say, what? And you would say... A share. How much? Five. Beef! Shall I fetch him, Mr. Keniston? Would you be a dear? Mr. Keniston. <laughs> Mrs. Hughes. Let's get to work, shall we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are you wearing that tonight? Yes. No, no, you're not. Well, Sir Charles designed this costume. It looks it. You'll strip down to your shift. A strip? You can't tell me how to be a woman. I'm not teaching you how to be a woman, but how to be Desdemona. I don't want to be Desdemona. I don't want to act ever again. No, you claimed the role. Hold on to it till they pry your fingers from its neck. And you hold this theatre in your hands. So... Stand still, dry your eyes, and strip. Muss your hair before the scene. Not like that. That's puffing it to make it look attractive. No, no. Uh, no, no, no lip paint. White cheeks, pale lips, blood drains down with sleep, not up to the face. Now, the way Betterton does the last scene, there are 32 lines cutting 17. You're the woman, I'm the man. Start of the bed. Not like that. That's like me. Is that how you sleep? How am I supposed to know how I sleep? I'm sleeping while I sleep. Don't act with what isn't there. The, the man's been a festering boil for three fucking hours, hasn't he? Yes. He's come to your room, woke you, and told you to pray before you die. So, what's the line? Uh, uh, talk you of killing. <clears throat> I, I do. Then heaven have mercy on me. Good girl, keep going. They are loves I bear to you. 
peace and be still. And I mean that. But Othello is advancing on her. Am I? Do you see me moving? You take two steps back on the first line, then stumble on the last line. I can't remember the stumble. Peace and be still! Put my life and soul, send for the man and ask him! Send for the man and ask him, easy to say, isn't it? Send for the man and ask him. Cassio's name gives her the willies. But she doesn't say the name Cassio. Aha! I'm lost. <laughs> Naga wanted to poison the Moor's mind with a lover for Desdemona. He had to pick someone who made sense. It couldn't be... Jojo the mute boy, Iago picked Cassio because, in truth, Desdemona does fancy him. So when Othello mentions him, she must say, yes, call for Cassio. But his name doesn't come easily. But she doesn't say his name. Yes. The next exchange of lines comes fast. Why? We want to get to the murder faster than they expect. How can I say things like, while I say one prayer, fast? No, no, you're not in charge of this part of the scene. The more is. The more says his lines fast. You have to slap your words in as fast as you can. Go. Alas, he is betrayed and I am undone. Out, strumpet, weep thou for him to my face. Oh, banish me, my lord, but kill me not. Down, strumpet. Kill me tomorrow. Nay, if you strive. In half an hour. Being done, there is no pause. But while I say one prayer. It is too late. No! <laughs> <laughs> then what comes out of rehearsal? I planned to scream anyway. <laughs> good for you. Oh, throw me on the bed, kill me! No. We have to finish this off. Save something for the moment. Always do it a bit different than you planned. Good to throw yourself a bit. Recall what we've done up to this point. Then, when you die, surprise me. But how do I know Mr. Betterton will do as you've done? You don't. Because he won't. What? Right. Ready to go? Yes. I'm playing the moor. I beg your pardon? Mrs. Hughes insists. Mrs. Hughes? I, I, I do, I do. But does he even know the part? Yes, he knows it. Now, out, all of you. <sighs> Mr. Kiniston, my thanks. <laughs> it's not a good part, Desdemona. Go for Cleopatra. Cleopatra? She kills herself with the sting of an asp. Those who do die do never recover. I blame you for my death. What's that from? See you on stage. It is the final scene of Othello. King Charles, Nell, Villiers, Sedley and Pepys are all there. It is the cause. It is the cause, my soul. Let me not name it to you, you chaste stars. It is the cause. It is the cause. Yet I'll not shed her blood, nor scar that whiter skin of hers than snow, and smooth as monumental alabaster. Yet she must die, else she'll betray more men. Put out the light. Then put out the light. Thou cunningest pattern of excelling nature, but once I put out thy light, I know not where is that Promethean heat that can thy light relume. When I've plucked the rose, I cannot give it vital growth again. It needs much to wither. So sweet was ne'er so fatal. I must weep, but they are cruel tears. This sorrow's heavenly, it strikes where it doth the love. She wakes. Who's there, Othello? Aye, Desdemona. Are you come to bed, my lord? Have you prayed tonight, Desdemona? Aye, my lord. If you bethink yourself of any crime unreconciled, and yet through heaven and grace solicit for it straight. Alas, my lord, what may you mean by that? Well, do it and be brief. I will walk by. I would not kill thy unprepared spirit, no. Heaven forfend, I would not kill thy soul. Talk you of killing. Aye, I do. Then heaven have mercy on me. Think on thy sins. There are loves I bear to you. Aye, and for that thou diest. That death's unnatural that kills for loving. Alas, why gnaw you so on your nether lip? Some bloody passion shakes your very frame. These are portents, but yet I hope, I hope they do not point on. Peace and be still! I will, I will so! What's the matter? That handkerchief, 
which I so loved and gave thee, thou gavest to Cassio. No, no, by my life and soul, send for, Ca send for the man and ask him. His mouth is stopped. Honest Iago hath taken order for it. Cassio is betrayed and I'm undone. Out, strumpet! Weep'st thou for him to my face? Oh, banish me, my lord, but kill me not! Down, strumpet! Kill me tomorrow, let me live tonight! Nay, if you strive! But half an hour! Being done, there is no pause! Oh, well, I say one prayer! It is too late! No! What did it for life? No! No! I am Penelope's killing! noise is this? Not dead, not quite yet dead. I that am cruel am yet merciful. I will not let thee linger in thy pain. So, so. Oh, my, my good lord, yonder's foul murder. Oh. Possibly. Bastard. Alas, 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 what cry is that? Sweet mistress, speak. Who hath done this deed? No, nobody. I myself. Farewell. Commend me to my kind folk. Oh, farewell. Why, how should she be murdered? Bugger. Bravo! 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 We still have one more scene. Backstage, after the performance, everyone has come to congratulate the pair who are not there. Mrs. Hughes, Mr. Betterton, surely that was the fun I've ever had in the theatre. What performances? Mrs. Hughes. Producer coming through. Thank you. I do think <laughs> I did the most extraordinary performance of my life. <laughs> Good show, Betterton. <laughs> Thank you. Thrills and chills. That new ending, very, very real. Yeah. Almost too much so, but uh, restorative somehow. <laughs> That's tragedy for you. Or in terror, and yet we still go to dinner. <laughs> Where are Mrs. Hughes and Mr. Kiniston? A private alcove backstage. You almost killed me! I did kill you, you just didn't die. Why didn't you finish me off? I finally got the death scene right. <laughs> so... Who are you now? I don't know. I don't know. The end. Yay! Cameras on, everybody! Yay! Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, uh, this this marks, I believe, number sixty-two um, uh, for Zoom shakes. Um, uh, thank you so much to this incredible cast. Um, I'd also like to give a special shout out to Miss Megan Golden Avocado, as, as it is her birthday today. We love you, Megan. Happy birthday! Thank you for spending your birthday with us, um, gracing us with your incredible talents, uh, lady. Um, everyone, there is. Some big news coming. Um, some things are in the works currently. Um, uh, we have a big announcement to make um, in a couple weeks about Zoom Shakespeare Productions. Uh, thank you so much and have a wonderful evening. And Henry, you can kill the live stream.